name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing uh, tips on how to handle animals and insects that may want to eat your survival garden. Let's discuss animal issues first. The best way to protect your survival garden from animal pests is with a good fence. This is not always possible, so we will discuss other options in a minute. To protect your garden from deer, you will need a fence that is at least 15 feet high, preferably 20 feet high. A fence of this height will also protect your garden space from the bulk of the animal populace that likes to jump over fences. Burrowing animals, like rabbits and so forth, require that your fence be dug into the ground at least 12 to 18 inches. So, the most effective garden fence for your situation would be 20 feet high and dug into the ground 18 inches. Another consideration for fencing material is small animals that can squeeze through holes in your fencing material. The holes that a wild rabbit can squeeze through are 2 inches in diameter or 2 inches square depending. A mouse can squeeze through a quarter of an inch in diameter or a quarter inch square. So consider these aspects when considering fencing material. Now if you can't swing fencing within the above perimeters, you can keep the bulk of animals out of your garden spot with a four foot tall fence that is dug into the ground about 12 inches. It won't keep deer out of your garden space or any other type of jumping animal, but will give you protection from the bulk, bulk of the other animals. Remember that a raccoon is a very clever animal that you will find virtually impossible to keep out of your garden space if you've planted corn. So don't plant corn. <laughs> this will give you a fighting chance with the rest of your garden produce. If you can't swing any kind of a fence, another me method of protecting your garden spot is to use scent deterrents. This is quite effective. I've used this in the past. It does work. The best choice here is human male urine. Get the male members of your group to urinate into containers and then sprinkle this urine around the perimeters of your garden patch daily. And if it rains, you may have to do this a little more often. This really does work. I have stopped deer from raiding several of my gardens via this method. It has worked well for many other people as well. If you have fruit trees, you will need to protect them from squirrels. I have seen squirrels strip entire apple trees of their fruit in the space of a couple of days while still green. Squirrels are huge pests in these types of situations. One of the best ways to handle this situation is to collect the hair of everyone in your group from hair brushes and from hair cutting and put a hair, a hair ball about a half inch in diameter into a square of material cut from something like an old t-shirt. Put some blood or meat scraps or things of this nature into this ball as well and then tie it all up and uh, then dunk this uh, t-shirt square once you've tied it up into male urine so that it's good and human smelly. Okay. Tie a two inch two foot long string to the scent ball and then dunk the whole thing into the male human urine and then hang several of them in each of your fruit trees um, on the lower branches. And this is really an excellent deterrent for squirrels. It works. Now scent deterrents are your best method of han handling animal pests overall. If you have things like gophers, groundhogs, voles, moles, and things of this nature. Fill their, their holes with human excrement and urine to drive them out. 
you'll have to keep up on this to drive them out so you know you really have to be diligent setting snare traps to catch them in it is another way to go and killing them with slingshots or guns works well if you have the time and you know the if you have if you can hunt them keeping dogs is very beneficial as they'll d drive most of these things off your garden space but if you have dogs you will need to fence your garden space in or else the dogs will destroy your garden patch in short order cats in general are very beneficial for keeping rodent populations down but in a post societal collapse scenario most dogs and cats will have been eaten squirrels and other small animal populations will be sparse as well to begin with as people will have eaten them but they will come back in huge numbers in short order and this is why I gave the above information on the animals next comes insect pests the first line of defense against this issue is soil that is in excellent health and is full of nutrients after this comes companion planting and hand picking of insect larvae and caterpillars Let's start with hand picking of caterpillars and insect larvae. A lot of insects have a pupa stage of development which happens in your soil. They lay the eggs about two to four inches under the ground and that's where they develop. Your best line of defense here is to get comfortable and sit down on your garden patch in the spring and hand dig through your entire garden patch and pick out all the insect pupae and larvae that you come across and get it out of your garden patch before you plant anything. You can simply fling them out of your patch or put them in a container of some kind that you dump far from your garden patch after you are through collecting them. Birds love these things, in particular chickens. Many butterflies and moths lay their eggs on your vegetables which will then turn into caterpillars that voraciously eat your vegetables the best way to handle this situation is to have daily inspections of your plants that are being attacked in this manner every day you go into your garden patch and pick off the all the caterpillars that you find you will usually find them on the underside of leaves check thoroughly every day during the height of your caterpillar stage this is a very effective and is the only way you can deal with the cabbage moth caterpillar which is a tiny green caterpillar with a voracious appetite for your cabbage plant family another nasty garden critter is a cutworm this nasty little beast of an insect will chew through the stems of your garden plants during the nights not all areas have this issue if your garden does have this problem then in circular plants with barrier preventions is your best bet toilet paper rolls cut into two inch segments and pushed half inch into deep into the soil around your plants help anything you can find that will serve this function will work glass bottle pieces metal things whatever you can find that will serve as a barrier will work even wood squares that you make. The best line of defense is the natural deterrent for insect pests that comes in the form of planting certain plants around your susceptible plants that the problem insect can't stand or finds poisonous. This body of knowledge is called companion planting. Just like human beings Plants like and respond to other plants in favorable and unfavorable ways. And it's very beneficial to use this knowledge to help your garden plants grow more robustly and also to repel their natural insect pests. I will go over all of this in my next video. Remember that for the most part, your soil nutrition is a good if your soil nutrition is in a good state then your issues with insect pests will be virtually non-existent 
So don't get the idea from my discussion today that growing a survival garden is going to be impossible because that's simply not the case. I have just outlined many of the potential insect and animal issues that you may come across. The chance of you being plagued by all of the above is remote. You may have problems with one or two of the things I have discussed and nothing more. I just wanted to be thorough in my discussion on this matter. Well, that's it for today. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care!